Aboriginal and Islander um, people. And so I heard some different comments. Uh, well, heard. I read them on Facebook. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether friends is the right word. I, I see uh, one of... Um, there's a, a guy that I know who posts. He's probably the most opinionated uh, person I know. Um, so he's always got something controversial to say. And he made this thing about uh, remembrance and, and saying sorry to uh, Aboriginal people. Um, and he said, how would it be, he said, if you apologise for something and every time you came into the family meeting, they reminded you, he said, we, we've got to forgive and forget, and we should forget. And I scratched my head and I thought, should we? I thought, uh, how does that fit in with Anzac Day, lest we forget? And so it got me thinking, not just around that topic, but it, it got me thinking about what are the things that Christians should be forgetting and what are the things that we should be remembering? Well, obviously we've just heard that scattered right throughout our communion service Paul and, and Jesus saying, I want you to remember. And yet we know that when God deals with our sins, he takes them as far as the east is from the west. And there are passages that says he remembers our sins no more. Which in some way, it's a nice thought, but an impossibility. Because God cannot forget. He doesn't hold them against us. But it hasn't slipped his mind. So I thought, maybe we need some instruction on how, what's the right way to remember. Particularly if we're going to remember around communion. And I want to suggest that the Bible actually has some stuff to say about how to remember well. Um, and I'm going to suggest uh, that we could learn a little bit from from this. Um, in Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 9, and the setting of Deuteronomy, uh, the word literally means second law, and it's Moses at the end of his life, they're right on the border of the promised land, and he preaches five sermons. The book of Deuteronomy is five sermons that... that uh, uh, Moses preaches, I don't know about you, but I remember, burned in my memory, maybe I'm scarred, every time I left the house, my mother's parting words were, have you brushed your teeth and do you have a hanky? Like that was the, th that was the thing that was going to ruin my upbringing, wasn't it? It seemed like if you had brushed your teeth and you had a handkerchief, you could take on the world. But it, it, it was these last words and these last words that Moses wants to convey, he comes and preaches these sermons. And in chapter 8, he says these words, Be careful to follow everything I command and I'm giving you today so that you may live and increase. He says, Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way out of these, out of, in the desert for these 40 years. Um, he humbled you, causing you to hunger, and it goes on. And he, he says in the beginning of that chapter, he says, I want you to remember, he goes on and says some other things, and I'm going to group them through, uh, just bring up the next slide, that's it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, that's not biblical, that's Clint Eastwood. All right, just uh, not making any spiritual claims here. But, I, but it's a helpful way to remember. I think... Where we are instructed to remember the good things. So when Moses, if you read through, and I'm not going to read the whole passage, uh, but if you read through Deuteronomy 8 and 9, Moses is saying, I want you to remember the things that God has done for you. He led you in the desert. That's good, isn't it? He says, uh, he freed you from slavery. That's another good thing. And he, he says, you are meant to remember the goodness of God in your life. And that didn't stop on the edge of the Jordan River. That's for us as well. So we are to remember, and we're particularly to remember, the good things that God does. And we need to have opportunities, whether it's in a small group or sometimes there's a sharing time in a service, where we talk about the goodness of God. So we are meant to remember 
the good things. But as he goes on, and he, and he says, and when you've eaten and are satisfied, when you're in this good place, another good thing, the promised land, be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God. And it talks about, then he, he says, and he reminds them about the difficulties they faced. He said, do you remember when you were starving, hungry, and God gave you manna from heaven? Remember that? And do you remember when you stood at the edge of the Red Sea with a, cloud, a, a whirling cloud of dust because there's an army intent on killing you behind you and nothing but an ocean in front of you? Do you remember those times? And do you remember when there was no meat? And do you remember when there was no water and I gave you water out of the rock? In other words, he says you were to remember not only the good times, you were to remember the tough times, particularly the tough times where God got you through that difficult place. It wasn't fairy dust from heaven. This was tough. This is the kind of in the trench prayers. They say that there's no atheists in the trenches an illusion from war, that everyone cries out, God, help me. And I can see the nods and I can and I know your life that for most of us, there have been times where we have cried out and said, God, this is, this is nothing like what I want to happen. I've just been diagnosed with cancer or I've just had this situation. I've had this uh, breakdown in a, in a relationship. I've got problems with the family. I've got problems with all those tough times where God has come through for you. We're to remember those as well. And in a minute, I am going to ask, I haven't teed anyone up, and you know me, I'll wait, and if I don't get answers, I'll just keep waiting. I want you to start thinking how you can honour God by talking about how has God blessed you. What are some of the good things? Just fantastic stuff. And also maybe share some of the times where it's been tough and God has been faithful and seen you through those times because I think they're the type of things we should remember and we should share. But the last in uh, chapter 9, I think it is, in Deuteronomy, he actually goes to a bit of a darker place. He said, remember this and never forget how you provoked the Lord your God in the desert. And then he goes on to talk about that terrible incident as he's receiving the Ten Commandments on the mountain. They're using the very gold that he gave them through the Egyptians to melt down and make an idol. The lowest possible sin, you know, for those people to do. To accredit some being, this golden calf, and strangely says, lucky that's, he doesn't say, lucky that's in the past. Just put that behind you. He says, no, no, remember that. Because there's another type of remembering that we should be doing. And that's a remembering the times where we have sinned. Now, when I say that, it's not to bring guilt and condemnation. That's not what I'm saying at all. But it is to bring that kind of realisation, Lord, I'll never do that again. We are meant to remember the mistakes we've made, not pretty them up, not pretend they never happened, but to say, may that never be part of my future. See, I actually think personally that's some of the remembering we need to do in regard to our First Nations people. And people say, oh, it wasn't me that stole children or... In this, in this region, there have been massacres and stuff like this. But maybe we can remember those times of sin and we can say, never again, Lord. Don't let us drift down that path and be like that again. Let us not be idolatrous. Let us not be vicious. Let us not... And you can fill in the gap. I'm probably not going to ask you to share your sin here. But the first two, in a moment, I do want you to share. What are the good things? And what are the tough times that God has uh, seen you through? So the good, the bad and the ugly. We're actually meant to remember all of those. 
When we remember our sin, remember this. It was dealt with on the cross. We're not to remember and feel guilty or ashamed. That should be free. When I talk about being healed from our past, I use the phrase, it should be a memory without power. I don't believe in forgive and forget because I don't think we can forget. The Holocaust Museum has one word, I'm told, across the front. Remember. We're not meant to forget these terrible things, but we can move on and we can remember our sin in the freedom of full forgiveness. That's pretty cool. Because if God says I'm okay, not that I've never done anything wrong, quite the opposite. That's pretty powerful, don't you think? I don't have to worry. So, we come to a table of remembrance. And before we come out and uh, take communion, um, I'm going to... Richo, will you, you're, you're my delivery guy, kind of. Um, so what we I know that for some of you, uh, making the journey out the front is a challenge, uh, mobility wise. Uh, if you like, uh, if you put up your hand, Richo will come and deliver, uh, the elements to you. Uh, but for the rest of us, we're just going to walk forward and take a piece of bread. Don't handle everything. We're not back at, um, the restrictions of COVID, but we want to be wise. Um, so you can take a piece of bread and you can take uh, the juice. There are a few uh, rice crackers for those who are gluten intolerant. Um, but before we do that, tell me, what are some of the, how has God blessed you? I think, I think I need something from this, this and this side. I've got less to share over that side. So who's going to tell me what, what are some of the ways that God has blessed you? So remember, the two divisions are how God has blessed you. And in a moment, we're going to talk about some tough times that God got you through. But how has he blessed you? Wow. <laughs> I was going to say, God, you better start moving. Thank you. He gave me a beautiful husband and family. Oh, that's good. Way. <clears throat> Uh, God's peace that surpasses un understanding. I know we read that in the Bible, but when we experience it, it's just something so enormous. And I want to give you an example. The day when Sue had her car accident, when a truck hit her up the backside and broke her spine in six places. When I arrived at the scene, it was a scene of fatality. And Sue was there, still alive. And my brother-in-law was there, and he was... He was going off his brain. He wanted to find the driver and kill him. And uh, God intervened and sent me to the driver. And, I, and the driver was sitting with the policeman in the police car. And I came beside the, the driver and, and I said, are you the driver? He said, yes. And I said, I'm the husband. And as soon as I said that, the fear in the guy's face, and even in the policeman's face, was, was enormous. But I just sat down beside the guy and I said, it's all right. This is a bad day for you too. You didn't set out to do this. And the look on the policeman's face was, what? Didn't, didn't expect that from a grieving husband. But God gives us a peace that surpasses understanding. Okay. Thanks, Mark. You've answered the second part of that. Because <laughs> if that wasn't a, a bad day that God came through. <laughs> okay. Who else? What are some of the good things we can give thanks to God? Really? Provision. Provision. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Well, time and time again, right? Yeah. All right. Something from this side. Okay, I'll come back to you. The, the. I know there's only a handful of you, but I will wait. Yeah, Peter. Right here. Right beside you. Right my ability to exist. Thank you. Through his yeah, good. Uh, now I saw Marilyn. I think 
it's um, the, the good good bad thing out here really because when I repented of my sins and God the worst thing or apostle God forgave me and I came for salvation. Yeah. And I think the remembrance of that is always humbling because it reminds me of God's mercy. Yeah. And so yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, this little pocket, come on. So. I think it's just on what I said too. Uh, Isabella is a she's a an image of God's goodness because Sue was twenty three weeks pregnant with Isabella the day when she had a car. Wow. Yeah. And because she stands here is a, is a, a message of the goodness of God. That's good. That's good. Oh, really? Wow. What have I? Yeah, good on you, mate. Uh, when I'm thinking about how God has blessed me, I think about um, the heritage of um, knowing God through my family. Yeah. Wow, um, that's good. And I know my family, Claire's family, um, and that's a generational thing that really God's been blessed with. And I think of that in the light of what other family units look like. Yeah. And um, it's just such a blessing. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Just think about it. I start to see people's heads nodding. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's my yeah. family too. Uh, a Christian heritage. Other good things? Really? Yeah, yeah, John. Well, God has blessed me. When I was converted, uh, our three sons have all been Christians. We've all become Christians in our families. And even our grandsons, our grandchildren, uh, turn to Christ, all except for one the Yeah. That's good. That's good. So just. You're going to say husband, aren't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a try. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we thought when we first retired, we were looking and looking and looking for a long time to find, to find somewhere to live. Yeah. At this point. Here we are. Yeah. Good on you. That's God's guidance. Yeah, Reza. I am very blessed that they found a situation where I can live with my family here in Australia. I was um, in from the book that we always, you know, um, I'm really active where I am in the church, but when I come to Australia, I'm just said, oh, I'm by myself, what do I do? And uh, my family is over there. Now I found second family, I'm very blessed and happy that I'm here. Ah, oh, bless you. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. I'd like to thank God for the hope that He gives us, the hope that we can have in Him. Yeah. And for the resilience that he has given us. And I'm talking about uh, our Aboriginal heritage as well, you know, the hope that we can have. Yeah. And the resilience that we are getting because of uh, what we face in life. Just thank yeah. God for this. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. Um, just that, like God's blessing is like a great youth group that I can go to and like just interact with everyone and like the mum and dad being the youth leaders and then like our little group with my own is really amazing. Yeah, cool. Excellent. Yeah. I kind of get the, the, I know that for some it's, a, it's an embarrassment thing or oh, I don't like to speak out in church and some of you is probably sitting there and saying this isn't real church. But, you know, but uh, once we get started talking about God's goodness, there's a lot to thank him for, isn't there? Uh, I've been blessed because uh, from Fiji and uh, how God opened the door for us to come to Australia and I've never been in an aeroplane before and God now <laughs> take us not to take the aeroplane, three planes, the four planes, come here, come here, flying, flying, flying and I'm supposed to be blessed. Okay, that's great. Is God good or what? Absolutely. So, now we know that in our head, but some, 
sometimes the power of going, it looks like this in my life. And just as we were talking, uh, as Jono was speaking a moment ago, it, was, it just struck me that there's a heritage of Christian faith that we get to pass on to our kids and our grandkids. And for some of us, we have been the recipients of that, that faith. I went to a, a funeral of a, of a great Christian guy uh, who'd been a missionary most of his life, and uh, all his kids, I was feeling, at that stage we were living in Sydney, and uh, feeling the distance of uh, our first grandchild at that stage living in Coffs Harbour with her parents, and that felt so far away, and he'd go, oh, yeah. He said, my son, I've got one son in the Philippines, I've got one son in Kazakhstan, I've got... He said, yeah, it's hard being separated. I'm going, wow, Coffs Harbour's not that bad, really. And I used to go away, I'd go to Perth for a couple of weeks of ministry, and I'd say, it's hard being away from the family. He said, yeah, he said, I remember I would walk out of our gate in India with Dorothy, his wife, crying at the gate. He said, and I knew that I would be on the road for 10 weeks. I thought, yeah, these 10 days aren't so bad. When he died, we realised that his three out of four of his children were missionaries. His grandchildren pretty much were all saved. And we tracked back that heritage to David Livingston in Africa. And you go generation after generation after generation. And some of the stuff I know, I can see heads nodding about the value, you know, of giving our children a Christian heritage. And you guys get to be first generation in that. That, you know, you didn't experience that from your background, but you got to change or God got to change, starting with you, a whole heritage. So I just really feel led to pray. Uh, into that whole Christian heritage stuff. And I'm seeing generations in the back row there. Uh, and it was just so great to, to see the baptisms at Easter and seeing the different generations being baptised. So let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, when we think about the good things, there is lots and lots and lots and lots to think about. Help us to remember. And I just recognise that there are unspoken good things that you've done. And we want to give you thanks for that, particularly for the blessing of Christian heritage. Lord, I pray for the families and may the, the truth of the gospel reach down from generation to generation. And I would pray in greater power. We thank you for the heritage of those who built into us that have received that. We thank you and we want to be those kind of people as you use us to build in to other people. Uh, I pray for this church family, Lord, because there may be uh, people who come that don't have uh, fathers or husbands or wives or, or and we get to be a blessing to them and to embrace them into this family. And we pray that you would do that more and more. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would grow this church, not for financial reasons, not for credibility reasons or anything like that, kudos, but so that more and more people are embraced in this church and in other churches through this district. May they all grow reaching out with your love. Amen. Amen. Well, I know that you've drifted into some of that stuff. I want you to uh, try and keep it short, but tell me, uh, I want to just give God acknowledgement of how he's got you through some tough times. Okay. Mark showed you the way. A car accident. On the on the face of it, it looks terrible, but God's presence in it. <laughs> Jeff was on board at one stage. Yeah. He finished up getting down on his knees and praying. Yeah. And he got the job a couple of days later. Wow. That's good. There's a few of us have uh, kind of been there and. Uh, through the trauma of going, God, what are you doing? Yeah. My mom time is my mom when she passed away. I guess a COVID, uh, you know, COVID thing and I can't go home. 
and I'm really sad. And I said to myself, I think this is there for me. Just she's my inspiration to you know to do things, you know, and I can go home. And uh, the second half is my son. He was uh, 15 years old, and he had um, a stroke, and I could not do it. But until now, he can find out what's the reason in his. But I know God is the author of everything, so I submit it all to him. And God's goodness in, and Lord, I, I just want to pray for Reza and just pray that you would continue to wrap your arms around her and the family and see her through this tough time as you've seen her and others through tough times before. Amen. Amen. Okay. God's healing. I, uh, 12, about 12 years ago, I had open heart surgery. Open heart surgery, yep. So four bypasses, uh, that I was pretty clogged up in there. And, uh, <laughs> the surgeon, you know, God, I believe, worked through the surgeon and, yeah. uh, touch wood on the store, running yeah, yeah. on all, all the cylinders. Yeah. It's good. I'm thankful for his, uh, provision of medical. Yeah, medical. amen. And just on that, just want to talk about the, the, we are so blessed. Maybe we live amongst it and get used to it, but the medical, uh, services here in Australia are amazing. They just incredible. And it brought home, uh, uh, to me yesterday because I visited Ed, uh, Drummond in hospital and, and Ed's got some problems with circulation and intense pain and stuff like that. So, and he's frustrated that he that he's at his least capable he's ever been in his entire life, and that's frustrating. I told him it was his fault because he's out, he's lived long enough to be a problem for the medical profession at 92. Uh, but yeah, God's goodness just through the medical stuff, other things. Good God's goodness in tough times. Uh, yeah. Many years ago, um, I was given a warning that I would be going to a testing trial that not to be uh, because God had out of time. And when my parents had to be put into care and I had to stay with my mum for a long time, and I was starting to get resentful and I realised that the battle was not in the circumstances but in my response. Yeah. And that word, uh, which someone was faithful enough to give me was the thing that I clung to yeah. and helped me to get through a very difficult time. Yeah. Um, one of the, the powerful things um, about the gift of prophecy when you speak or when a, a word of prophecy has been spoken, quite often it's not for that particular time. It's preparing you for time ahead. And like you say, you hang on to those. Uh, there's a saying that not, don't doubt in the dark what's been revealed in the light. Um, and that's it. So far. Um, God's goodness through tough times. Yeah. This is my exercise as well for the day. I just want to say in regards to doubting in God's promises. Uh, when we left Fiji in 2019, one of the promises that I was clinging on to was Faithful is he that call of you, who also will do it. Yeah. We left Fiji with uh, less than 100 dollars with us. <laughs> and my wife was asking me, what are you doing? I said, don't look at me, look at him that is calling us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But for the last four years, yeah. God has been wonderful to us. And we are now learning never to doubt his promises. Yeah. Because God always comes to do with his promises. Amen. Amen. Uh, the difficult part, isn't it, that you only develop faith in the face of difficulties. Um, so And so often we can see a difficulty and go, oh, God, why is this happening? Uh, and actually the good question is, God, what are you wanting to do in my life through this difficulty? I have a spiritual director and his favourite or one of his favourite sayings is, Pete, don't waste the pain. 
I tell him what a mess life is in or my frustration. He gets really excited. He says, oh, God's, got, God's doing some amazing stuff in you. Don't waste the pain. And I'll go, no, I want to escape the pain. <laughs> and Are are there any others that would like to? Um, My last time is uh, I was brought up from a broken family. (laughs) My mother and my father got very well. And I grew up with that kind of lifestyle. My my mother had to look for work and abandon me. And my younger brother, I had to uh, look after him. And we were brought up to my grandparents, and it, sometimes I just hated myself, and I want to commit suicide. And uh, and God was so loving and caring. <coughs> it's always someone he used to work in my life to help me, yeah. to encourage me, and pursue me to keep serving God. Amen. Praise God for that. Wow. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. And I know that if I started picking on people, which I won't do, on occasions I do, a few people go, (laughs) so he says, uh, that we could find, we could hear more and more stories because God is a good God. But he's not just the God that blesses by pouring abundance on us. He does that. And that's wonderful. And don't, Feel bad about that when God blesses you. Thank him for that. But he also develops you by going with you through those tough times. And as we've gone through and just shared some of that, tears have come to eyes because there have been tough times. But God's faithfulness in that is just amazing. And now I want you to quietly consider that ugly part, not to feel guilty, but maybe to think about a, a time or an attitude or a, a behaviour that you did in the past that you, you're not trying to pretty up and pretend wasn't inappropriate or sinful, but that you would say, God, I've learned from that. Help me to never go there again. Help me to be a different person than that person was back then. Because that's what we need to remember as well. So I'm just going to ask you to close your eyes and just quietly to yourself, contemplate that. Would we just recognise that for each of us in different ways there have been times, sometimes before we were saved and, and for many of us after we were saved, we've done things, said things, thought things, behaved in ways that we just need to acknowledge 
were not good and they were actually sinful in our attitude or our rebellion or our carelessness. Before we ever hurt anyone else, we hurt you. And we just pray, firstly thanking you for your forgiveness, that you do wipe that slate clean. And more than just wipe that slate clean, you take away our sins and you give us the righteousness of Jesus himself so that we get to stand before you shining brightly in the radiance of Jesus himself. That is amazing. But allow us to remember the foolishness of our actions whether it was building a golden calf or maybe it was for someone like Peter who denied you. I bet he learnt from that and never denied you again. May we be like those people and may we make a decision today to be better than we were, not because of our effort, but because of your transformation by your Holy Spirit in us. May those memories of the times where we failed come without power, guilt or con- or any kind of uh, conviction or, or sense of that because of what you've done and what you offer. Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So... We're going to put on, I'm not even, I didn't even measure how long the song was. The song is an old vineyard song called At the Cross. Uh, if I can remember at least some of the words, it says, I know a place, a wonderful place, where abused and condemned find mercy and grace, where the wrongs we have done and the wrongs done to us are cleansed there with him, there at the cross. It just repeats, at the cross, at the cross. So as uh, we play that song, you can make your way forward. If you'd like someone to bring you uh, that, just put your hand up or um, send someone beside you out to get that. So we know, because Jeff read it to us, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took... Two very ordinary things that would have been there not only at every Passover meal, they would have been at virtually every meal in a Jewish household, usually some kind of wine and bread. He took the very ordinary things of life and bestowed upon them amazing meaning that 2,000 years later, we still come to with a sense of awe and respect and gratitude. And I think in that, there's a model for what he does with us. He takes pretty ordinary people, everyday people, and transforms us into something that are, that is valuable and a blessing to others. So if we uh, go to that song, and uh, there's no right or wrong way to do this, Um, there is broken bread and grape juice that represents the broken body and the blood of Jesus Christ. As you come out, take it, take it back to your seat and just drink it and eat it whenever you're ready.
We're going to finish our uh, service this morning uh, with a song, uh, after which I um, encourage you to fill out the back of your cards and drop them in that little black box that will be oh, there in the middle. Um, and again, you can stay around. There's not morning tea between lunch and uh, the end of the service, but you can stay around. I'm not sure how far off that will be. It will be a world's best morning tea or an early lunch. This song is a song of praise. It's called I Praise the Name. And the first verse says, I cast my mind to Calvary, which is just what we've been doing. I thought this was a great song to remember the goodness of God. I invite you to stand as we sing this together.
ocean still, I hear the stone silence too. song to the world that awaits. When we go from this place, from this uh, time of focused attention and worship, may our lives bring glory and honour to your name. May our words be the words that you speak and guide. And may your love go out to a needing world and community around us. And we pray that these things would happen so that your name is honoured and the Church of Jesus Christ is built. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please take a seat. Uh, fill out your cards. Put them in the back. If people would like to come forward for prayer, uh, we welcome you uh, forward for that as well. God bless you all. No, I don't know, mate. I'm right, yeah. thanks. No, thanks. But don't.
don't ever stop bringing it forward because the one day it's not there, I'll be <laughs> coughing and spluttering. <laughs> I used, to, I used to do it with an old minister down in this guy over here. Oh, okay. He had um, uh, asthma. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we used to run out of boys and <laughs> I'd go up and get a bit of Well, it's one of those things, mate, that if it's there, 90% of the time, I won't need it. And if it's not, about 50% of the time, I'll miss it. Thanks. Sorry. I was thinking more about those pictures uh, that I got. And I, I started thinking through them in terms of how would, if someone, like if I didn't get them and some, you said I had a dream and this was, I, I thought I'd probably interpret them a different way. So I thought, uh, because what usually when you interpret a, a bicycle or any mode of transport is, uh, is usually it's about a ministry and it's usually about a personal ministry. So if it was a car, it would be a small group. If it was a bus, it would be a, a youth group. If it was a, a train or a plane, it's like speaking into a region, stuff like that. So I would the, the two things that came up is that there could be a one-on-one -on -one or a smaller ministry that you're part of that's going to come under attack. Um, the other phrase that came to me, a uh, question, is if it's... So that's... That's the um, the bicycle part of it. The dog part, uh, is, and it would, because it was attacking and because it wasn't you, uh, I would. The question that came to me is, what danger are you have you learnt to live with? Is there some thing that you're thinking that yeah yeah I know what or, or you know yeah 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 what it, and just a, almost a dismissal and just to be wary of that. So that's a uh, just a different phrase. Um, for you, made the it, it was just all about being caught unawares. And again, it's that is just be on your guard that there's either an attack or a a. Um, I know you you can't guard from an unexpected area. I know you can't. But just the fact of even just praying and getting support in place or whatever it is, it's it's almost like. You were caught unawares, and that doesn't have to be because of your lack of vigilance. You know, so they just came up, and I thought, there's different ways. Um, and I'm, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm trying to give you ten different ways so that the word means something. Well, it's still I okay to throw it out. Definitely, yeah. and, and clarified it because we were at home, and I said to John, I like John, I said, oh, I should really just do it. Why the pictures are getting us? Because... Normally when I've had something prophetic, you know, you get a real um, a real response yeah, yeah. to the spirit that mm -hmm. I know that's speaking yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. at all with yeah. the I'm really wrestling with them over the weekend. I'm like, God, you know, like what's what dangerous thing in my life? Am I ignoring or avoiding or trying to get around? Like, and, and it's also made me like it's almost made me feel going, oh, okay, am I ignoring? Like what what am yeah, I yeah, doing? Yeah. You know what I'm gonna think. What you're saying now does actually okay. tie into something that I have. Okay, it could, like that gives me a more specific area that I can phrase it on. Sure. Because I know there is a danger in my life. Yeah, yeah. That when you put it like that, I go, that one actually makes a bit more sense. Okay. And um, to, to just pray in and ask for God's clarification. Because it has this like me going, oh, God, I'm just going to do this intro. No, no, no. Um, and, you know, and I don't feel that's how prophecy is meant to no, no. be. Like it's okay to be made uncomfortable to have my. I yeah, yeah. forward from that and I've been really confused. So I'm glad you said something. Yeah, yeah, because I'm like, oh God, I, I, I that gives me something more specific to, to bring into the world. And again, don't don't make it fit. Everybody gets it wrong. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's certainly if <coughs> um if it was if it wouldn't let me go, I would tell you. Like if yeah, you know, sometimes 
you know, you get stuff, you can't shake it, you can't, and it's yeah. not like that. Yeah. Um, and the, the other thing that I would say generally or that, that I operate on or, or believe is that sometimes it's just one part. Like, I don't know what's window dressing and what's core. So the dog may mean nothing or the dog may be the whole thing. Yeah. You know, the bike may mean nothing or the, you know, kind of... Um, so all of that, you know, and put it alongside, it becomes a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Uh, it's not the whole puzzle, so... Yeah. Yeah, and that's like, I think where I was just finding where does this fit? It's like, you know, bringing up every aspect of your God. You know, Saturday morning, I'm like, okay, God, what about this area or that? Or so Friday morning, whatever it was, and I'm like, just put more of your God. You created a really great time with God, so yeah, you yeah, yeah. us. 